<laughs> greetings. <laughs> oh yes, it's been one of these great days of joy and laughter, expectations, differences, culture. Wow, and here we are again on uh, this, as you see in me, uh, brightish, yes, yes, brightish. Uh, day, great day, great day, great day. So we have been looking at these two words, uh, mental health. Uh, and we identify for not the last broadcast, only for that, but they're not too bad words, they're good words. Because we do have a mind which establishes mental and we need to be healthy. Now, of course, uh, post-COVID-19, those two words are, are synonymous to every family now because everybody's talking about mental health. I mean, you, you can't seem to escape it in the offices, in the, in the institutions, workplaces. Everybody wants to do something on mental health because of the stressors that we experience during COVID-19. Uh, because the loss of jobs, loss of people, death, I mean, it was horrendous. So therefore people were well, having all kinds of psychopathologies and uh, experiences that really needed both psychiatric and psychological support. But I'm here in your house, in your car, wherever you are, just to help you, as I did in the last broadcast, to appreciate that, those two words and to see the experiences that we have daily are all in context of mental and health. So that it is not a sickness. It's not that you're going crazy, you know, lo what, what we say to in, in our part, lo 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 loco, loco, which is a Spanish word. <laughs> we are going loco, but we are really having sometimes difficulties in working out resilience and hardiness within our situations. Our uh, last broadcast, we were looking at the whole concept of hardiness and resilience in terms of how do I make my own decision for the feeling I have and how do I work it out differently when I'm in a construct. We looked at the post-colonial uh, era that we are in as against the colonial and the, the master times where people were in that construct and had to do and suffered uh, both psychologically and socially and physically. Uh, but now in 2022, where is that relevant and how does it apply? We showed that how we are still in this captured world. Even though we are this, this, uh, saying that we are free, free from slavery, and of course, we are independent as a nation, uh, but yet are we free? Are we not displaying uh, slavery in a different dynamic, or rather with a different dynamic? And asking ourselves, hey, what next, how to, and can't give an answer, so therefore we have those two words. It's important for us to realize that there are a couple of things that we need to look at. And one of the things is that how we work out those two words of uh, outcomes and expectations. Notice I said outcomes first. No, normally we use expectations, but you see, it's the outcome that really creates the fuzz. And I say fuzz, that uneasiness uh, that creates the conflict and maybe trauma. Because we can't seem to think that the expectation I have must be and no different. Is that English? So whatever I expect to happen, must happen. If it doesn't happen, well, I, I have to show that I am displeased. And so we have these negative emotions that are precipitating out of that consciousness of the fact that, hey, hey, I planned it this way. Why is it not coming out the way I planned it? I want it to happen this way because that is how it must be. So that when we look at the word expectations, how do we validate and work out what we are and who we are? It's all about the way we have been socialized, of course. Uh, our parents' goals and our parents' values, we have taken that in, and these are now to be ours, but yet we don't like them to be ours. So there's an expectation that you should behave like granny, but now there's another expectation I behave like me. And the behave like me is where we have the battle, because even though we want to behave like me, me is still exposed to them 
as in what my grandparents did. What is the expectation? And you don't want it to be told of you that it's, you're not behaving like uh, it's not there. See, how did we understand the ambitions that they had, the values that they set down, and those goals that they wanted for us in terms of our employment, in terms of our education? We, we had to realize that they were educating us so that we can be somebody. And because today we may not have been that somebody, mental health is an issue. Because there is the reaction that either we, have, we are of no good, we are not carrying all the family traditions, we haven't come up to scratch, we have not attained that persona, so therefore we sometimes are struggling to define ourselves because of those expectations. Can we have our own? But you see, as I said earlier on, it's not so much the expectation, it's the outcome. How do we define what is now as to what was expected? And that is important, especially coming through the, the, that FOO, what we call family of origin. Those, the, those expectations that came through with the values and morals that were, was established or rather was, that emerged out of those cultures and those traditions. We are still to define how do we create a transition into 2022 when we are here working out those differences as if they were our own rather than it was somebody else's. How do I realize that my present day achievements are real, even though they don't align with the expectations of my parents and grandparents, even though that they are different and make me seem different, but I am who I am. So that when we talk about brilliance and excellence, how is that an achievement when it's not in line with? How is that an achievement when I haven't really establish what mommy and daddy wanted me to establish. How is it that I am going to be the real son or real daughter or the rather preferred when I'm not in the preferred profession or preferred work? How do I see myself in context of heritage and lineage? Ah, uh, ah, uh, tell me, <laughs> are they proud of you when you have deviated from? Are they proud of you when you have change it and make your own, you have to be proud of yourself. See, and that is where the outcome comes, comes into, into play. You have to create your own outcome as to be proud of you, as to own up who you are and what you present. It's a challenge, but I know it's a reality that we need to see today, right now, in this 2022. And as we leave 2020 to 2023, we, we realize that time continues to elapse, even though we have our own struggles and our own situations. Time is not waiting us to formulate a particular kind of dynamic to show that we are agreeing with what's happening. No, time goes on. We have to stay as it were. And I, th I think I could pull out a script here in season. You know, we have to be constant so that we are, are, are not seen as pushbacks or lacking or insignificant or irrelevant. So it, it is important for us to really come to terms with the context of uh, outcomes. How do we prefer those outcomes? How do we validate those outcomes? How do we establish that, that those outcomes are what we are to see, tell me, how do we validate that? Well, you know, that's a good question. <laughs> how, how do we validate that is a very good question. You think it is? I, I grew up with, my parents wanted me to be a medical doctor. And I ended up in a place where I was going to be you know, living in, in, in what you see behind me. I, I don't know if you've seen it, but there's water there. Uh, I wanted to be a, a severe, oceanographic severe, you know. Nothing that had to do with medicine. But that's what I wanted to be. 
I, I was going all out for that. It did not align with the expectations. And I, I could tell you in hindsight, there was that kind of in, indifference in our relationship because I, I wasn't pursuing in terms of academics the kind of study that would bring me into that medical field. And, and so you had to learn how to live with that disappointment, parental disappointment. At the same time, trying to be not disappointed in yourself for disappointing them. <laughs> you know, the kind of thing. So you don't want to feel disappointed because they're disappointed, uh, but you want to feel happy because you are pursuing something. And then I, I, I shifted uh, into uh, pastoral work. And then, oh, wow, the world collapsed because, wow, I'm going to be a hungry soul for the rest of my life. That, that was the concept then. So that I had to learn how to work me. So the outcomes that I was going to pursue now had to have different expectations. Eventually, I became a minister. And then, of course, psychologist. But that beginning in my teen life, when you are there desiring how to work out mommy and daddy, granny's perception of who we are, and to, of course, continue the, the, the heritage of our own family name. And that's a whole different talk, but it's a real talk. But yet, I am not seeming to say that, hey, what family name? We, we are first generation uh, secondary schoolers, are we? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, we are going to be first generation tertiary education uh, students. How, how do we work that? Was that an expectation? That my family would know that their children, my cousins and myself, would be tertiary educators? Duh! Sorry. Yeah! <laughs> wow! No! But yet, there is that expectation that we, you, 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 you have to carry out some of what we did. And, and so that we have to learn how to work out those incomes. Outcomes. Yeah, incomes to eventually. But outcomes now, outcomes, outcomes. Because you realize in their mind they want you to make sure you're in staff. And that is the reality, you know. But let's not shift to incomes yet. Let's keep to the outcomes. So that we are going to see how those outcomes must be changed. And it's important for me, therefore, to appreciate, yes, I've been socialized, yes, I've been educated, yes, I have ambitions, which may not be in line with my generational pur purviews. But I must learn how to achieve me, how to bring me into this picture so that I can have a balanced mental health. Because if I don't, I'm going to be living with regrets. I'm going to be living saying, why didn't I? How come I didn't? I should have. And we have to learn how to work those things differently. We have to learn how to establish and to come out of what I call a psyche war. What psyche war is this, Dr. Niles? Well, my dreams. My dreams. Yes, outcomes, my dreams. I have dreams about myself. You have dreams about yourself. Are those dreams not yours? No, they may not be the same dream of your parents, as I said just now, but they are your dreams. How do you work that war out? I should have, would have. My belief system. I have learned and been educated. <clears throat> I am more read. So therefore, my belief system may not be in sync with my parents. My consciousness, my, my comparison, my idealism, wow, my philosophies, my challenges, my oppo oppositions, my realities. There, there, there's that constant war into what is about me, which in itself creates its own trauma. And that's why mental health is you. How, how do you decide that perform, or rather, let's say, high school? determines your future. How, 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 how do you come to that? Why, do, why are we pressed there? Why, why do I say that my, my tertiary education establishes my future? It may not. 
but I do have a dream. Is my dream commensurate with my studies or with my interests? And, and that's the thing about it. We may have interests that we cannot find academic, academics to suit or any subject matter or any kind of training, but it's an interest. Can I be therefore creative? Can I come up with something that is never, has never been? Can I be the inventor because it's, it satisfies my desires and my dreams? How, how do I decide this? How do I work out these peculiarities that the philosophies that I may have, that I have carved because of the experiences around me, whether political or economical, I have philosophies. There are things that I would like, I, I, I teach out of my very person. I teach out of my very being. I teach out of my very behavior. Wow. I, I know what you're going to say. You're going to tell me that people say to you, you're different. You don't want to be said, you don't want that to be said of you. You don't want to be told that you're abzaki or you, you're always strange. That's fine. It's your philosophy. It's your particular pattern, but it's also your opposition. <laughs> How do you handle that opposition? How do you handle that challenge? And that is where mental health comes from. How do we behave when there's a psyche war as to what should and what is and what is to come? How do we work that and work that successfully? And that is where we are in this balance that brings us into this area of dysfunction. And we find ourselves finding out in terms of the why and the how, the when and the where. We, 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 we want to know this. Why am I this way and why am I not that way? What am I doing that I should have done or should have not done? How am I to do it? Where am I going to do it? When am I going to do it? And if I'm going to do it at all? And we find ourselves in a place of indecision that really encourages dysfunction, which then addresses my mental behavior, my mental responses, which tells me how I'm going to live. So it's important for me that when I am negotiating an outcome from an expectation, that I am looking at the why, the when, the how, the where, the if, and realizing that I need to be very systematic in answering those questions for myself, not from, for daddy or mommy, for myself, from myself, not from them, from me. I must own those aspirations. I must own those ambitions. I must own those outcomes. 2023, 2030, I must own that. And I must see the realities that are, that are coming to me in, in, as I man maneuver daily, whether it's the weather, whether it's the rain, whether it's the finances, the, whether the money drops, the dollar drops, whether it's another pandemic, whether there is no job. I must learn how to what? Maneuver. And that is what we are considering mental health. The ability to maneuver successfully through each day around these outcomes that are given out of an expectation. I like that. Quote, <laughs> how do we maneuver? And we're going to talk about that maybe in the next broadcast. So it's important for us to capture that how. I, I, I want to, 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 let's look at one more thing before we cap off here. Uh, the when, the when, the when. You know the when? When. Oh. And that, that is a crucial uh, question mark there. Because we are faced from a social perspective that there's a timeline that at 20, I should be this way. At 25, I should be that. At 30, I should be this. At, you, you know what I'm talking about? Yes, I, I see that smile. <laughs> yes, uh, you know, because and then by the time we reach 50, we get it old. No, hold on. That when creates a lot of negativity. So that there's a fight to work with a when. So I'm fighting that by 20, I have a particular business. By 30, I have this bank I have X amount of money. I have children. I have a house. By 40, and by 50, I want to retire. Those concepts 
are still yours, but we must be able to maneuver them as not to put pressure on our brain to create a dysfunction. I want you to learn that when is not something that you can put on a calendar. When is a progressive development of an idea that comes to pass as we live? Because there are so many differences in a day of that you want to call obstacles, that you want to call differences, that you want to call mishaps, but they are all part of putting you in a right place in order for you to champion the cause of a very successful outcome that we call tomorrow. I trust that you are capturing the essence of how you can begin to satisfy your endeavors, your ambitions, your future with a much more greater sense of accomplishment, even today for tomorrow. You don't have to wait to 2023 to love it. You can start now and say, I am able to craft it, to, to draft it. I'm able to see it because why? I am learning how to maneuver each day around the what, around the whys, around the hows, around the ifs. Because it's all about the when. Because that when controls our time and space. Let's get together in our minds, with our thoughts, and decide, I am not going to let timelines bash me in the brain, crush my heart, make me feel that I am losing life and I have no way to go far because I am this old. No, no, no. Ambition has to do with age. Ambition has to do with productivity progressively being established out of a desire from within. Kudos to you who have those great ambitions. Kudos to you who are looking forward to tomorrow. As I said, be careful of the when. I want to end on this. Do not let the when, because if you hit the when too hard, the if will hit you. And then you will have regrets about why didn't I? I should have, I should have, woulda, coulda, no. So, Sign it off, sign it off today with the concept that you are going to learn how to work your expectations differently with the outcomes and to understand that these outcomes are not just about today, they're about tomorrow. So as we plan, do not allow your tomorrow to die because you just are so crushed from your today. Today offers a new dimension for your tomorrow because there is another way that you can do it differently. God bless you and have a good evening, a good night, a good morning. Have a good tomorrow.